uh, screen here. Guess who's back at the office? Oh, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Josh Tenorio. Looking looking good, uh, LT. How's, first, let's just start there. How's it feel to be back on the job at the office? Because we know you had the COVID and you had a rough time of it. Um, so glad to see you recovered and, and back at work. Thank you. Um, this is my first day. You're my, you're my first appointment uh, back to work. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Uh, we're doing good. Uh, maybe we could just start with Labor Day, right? Pandemic, right? Huh? I said as best as we can be during a pandemic. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy just trying to get up and make sense of the day before it happens and then process the one before it. Uh, but I guess, LT, we'll start with Labor Day, right? So, man, people have been working hard this year, very hard, um, some more than others. But just very unfortunate. This is another one like Easter where COVID took this uh, holiday from us. And so did you have a message to all those, especially the essential workers who have been really, like I said earlier, holding up this um, island? Thank you. Uh, the number one thing I want to say is thank you to all of the workers that have been holding up the island and especially all of those that really haven't had a break for so long. Um, a lot of people working hard, especially at the hospital of public health first responders, and then the day-to-day -day things that uh, have been keeping the community going and going into the grocery stores, the hardwares, the people that are still going out there for air conditioning, electricians, all of that. But I, you know, the other thing, of course, is there are a lot of people out of work. Uh, and I just wanted to also focus in on that. And I know that uh, many people are at home because the businesses are closed and many others uh, have been laid off. Uh, and so, Obviously, that's the, the other big thing in my mind is, uh, you know, trying to get us to continue to make progress to try and get people more back to work. Um, and it is a difficult time. There are many business owners that are um, not able to open right now, but I'm, I'm optimistic that um, over the next few days, we'll continue to see some progress and hopefully uh, continue to take steps uh, going into a new normal. You know, we had uh, caught you in the uh, press conference Friday. So there was, the, with the Zoom, how it works is that it was, you know, in this case, it was the governor and I, and then we had saw it was you and then the sign language interpreter. And I admit there was, it was a, some of it was a little bit funny, but I just wanted to ask your take, uh, Lieutenant Governor, on uh, what we had heard from some members of these different, um, well, the economic uh, panel, the recovery uh, panel, just hearing from these members. About not, about, about not meeting and stuff, right? Right, right mm -hmm. not meeting, yeah. So I just if, if we could get your uh, take on it. I don't want to make you mad or anything, but what's your, your take on that, LT? Um, well, you know, I mean, I, I heard what the governor said. You know, she doesn't have to be there to convene. Uh, and this week we'll be looking at all the different groups and seeing where their progress is. I mean, there's always, there's always things that we can do better. Uh, and every day, that's kind of like what drives me. There are things we may miss. There are things that uh, we didn't accomplish last week that we want to focus in on. Uh, and uh, for my part, I'll just uh, maybe bring this on. I've been looking at uh, the last week. I Last week, I've been focusing a lot, coordinating with the uh, superintendent. Um, and, uh, and we're going to probably have a public meeting next week, Chris. Well, we compare notes about all the plans to expand all of the uh, relief funds for education and trying to bridge the gap for the parents at home um, and not uh, uh, maybe just to give you a little um, preview this week uh, we're not doing it this week because DOE is still doing some refinements on some of the procurement things that are going to be key for uh, expenditures but really it's going to be pushing uh, some more resources to expand the PBS University and having online resources and then the big chunk of course is going to um, try and aid um, the parents at home uh, trying to get um, additional capacity for kids it's it is a uh, it it won't happen overnight but we're coming up with a, a plan to make sure that we can try and give the aid at the soonest and then there's also uh, this week we're also spending a lot of time about uh, expanding internet coverage uh, from schools and super Wi-Fi sites, but also from libraries, uh, resource centers. And then this week, we'll be looking more at the mayor's council and the senior citizen centers, just trying to figure out what kind of infrastructure we can put in there uh, to expand um, coverage. And hopefully this will be uh, this will be good foundation for a permanent expansion in um, access for Wi-Fi. But so I would just say that, um, you know, I've been looking at that um, 
um, in terms of the recovery side. And this week I'll um, push and inquire more on the economic side. I mean, we've been getting briefings, we've been uh, looking at different things, uh, trying to also predict what kind of uh, humanitarian assistance more we can give. I know uh, we're working with FEMA to try and uh, get a few more weeks of the full uh, pandemic unemployment uh, so we can uh, uh, get more resources in there. And then taking a look at also at the uh, small business or the business um, assistance loans that Gita had uh, and seeing what other resources we can push in there. So that be my focus this week and then um, listening in on um, some of the industry related stuff. Of course, the tourism mm -hmm. is a big thing because of the world situation that we find ourselves. But yeah. um, we're also been looking at trying to um, prepare for tourists by uh, in a pandemic trying to figure out all of the different online uh, things that uh, devices that can help track things like that. The other thing I was going to say is later, I think on Thursday, uh, and I think the, the, we're working towards Thursday, um, public health has been working with the private sector and Google and Apple to try and get additional technology out there so that people can get notified in case there are positives in the future, things like that. Right. But I, I'd like to um, look at um, also, uh, I'll wait to, I guess in a few moments or minutes, uh, seeing how public health is going to move to expand the contact tracing. Last week, I, I kind of mentioned on Tuesday that we had people from University of California, right. San Francisco, yeah. that were training about almost 100 people on contact tracing. So there's, there's some trained people that are going to be added on to um, the program here to try and uh, ex uh, can, uh, expand the contact tracing aspect. And then I'll get an update. I don't ha have an update on the testing and results yet, but right. I'm sure I'll get a preview in the mm -hmm. next uh, at the next meeting I attend. Uh, LT, we, go ahead. No, we're we're gonna have Lillian on a little bit later. But right do up, you yeah. have do you have any oh, you know, update can I, on SIU? guys? Can I just also say, I, I do want to give my condolences to all the families that lost people over the last few days, and even for me, I have a second cousin that passed away. Mm -hmm. She's one of the ones. Um, the 49 year old that died a few days ago. And then uh, I know the family of the 31 year old that died yesterday. Um, it's very heartbreaking. I, I just want to, I know that the governor ex ex uh, expressed our condolences on all our behalf, but I do have to say that, um, you know, I, I, there are a lot of people that are sick. There's some, um, you know, prominent religious leaders I've heard that might be a leader that might be in the hospital uh, right, that, right. uh, you know, I want to uh, pray for and encourage everybody to pray for, especially the staff, uh, the family uh, waiting, but also the staff and the medical professionals that are treating them. Yeah, it's really, it sounds really crowded um, at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Mm. And so, you know, we had spoke with uh, Crystal Paco, and I think it was also mentioned in the press conference about uh, of finally uh, moving people into the skilled nursing unit. And, you know, when we spoke with Crystal, she said it will happen. Uh, they will be yeah, moved. Yeah, that, and, and that also, and uh, transferring all the patients that are at GRMC, too, so that, uh, you know, people have access to, um, to the emergency room and you know, those are those are the big pieces that uh, need to get resolved mm -hmm. ASAP. Do, do you know why um, no one moved up to the SNU over the weekend? I'll oh, find out more in the next call. I imagine they're trying to um, get all their staffing assignments done and uh, and the logistics of moving everybody. But I'll find out more on um, uh, today. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm talking about staffing, they have to figure out who they'll move from the different wards over there, right, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I only asked that because when we interviewed Crystal on Friday, she says it was it was going to happen this weekend. And then well, you know what? I'm not that sure. Was the assurance. Yeah, that was the assurance that the hospital gave us back on Friday. And mm -hmm. so, um, find out what uh, what yeah. the delay is about and what can we do to um, to get them in there. Mm -hmm. It's a critical facility that needs to be um, pushed in. Mm -hmm. LT, you, you talked about you had a second cousin who had uh, passed uh, from COVID over the weekend. The 49 year old female. Also, we're hearing the 31-year-old um, uh, female, just through a variety of chats. I don't know if you can confirm that. Was, was she the daughter of the Assen mayor? Because that's what we're hearing from, from people. You in know Aspen. what? I'm not talking to him. I've heard that. 
um, and I've uh, I've seen um, some uh, social media forwards right. that uh, would say that, but I I did not get to talk to him yet. I'll talk to him. I'll reach out to him um, a little later this morning. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's my understanding as many other people's understanding. And, yeah. and he's uh, so, and, um, just bring us up to speed. Yeah. The Essen mayor has tested positive for COVID and, and, you know, LT, we haven't been able to get a hold of him. So if you hear anything about his, um, condition, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I hope that he's doing okay. You know, I've been working with him the last few months on a bunch of, um, infrastructure projects in that, in the village. And, um, I'll be reaching out to him, mm-hmm. but, you know, I can tell you, um, when sometimes when you're sick, you're just not able to communicate as, uh, I'm sure as you much can, as you know. You can speak when firsthand on that. On the text. Right. Yeah. Right. LT, I just on the on the personal side, right? So we had this press conference Friday, and then it was you know, one death, and over the weekend we saw again, a, you know, four more. Five deaths since Friday. Five deaths since Friday, but just in in processing this, you know, as we, I mean, it sounds like we're moving forward in a lot of ways with, with what you got on your plate, but I mean, how do you kind of unpack this, this tragic news uh, to the people of Guam? Well, you know, it is hard. Um, 18 people so far, right. And we had gone for months with just five people were very optimistic. Um, It's, it is a, it's a, it is, I would say that it is a big, um, it's a big weight. I would think, for all of us, you know, for 18 members of our community to pass away. Um, And even though people had uh, maybe some medical conditions that complicated it, but they were had their own treatment paths and nobody expected them to leave us this soon. Uh, It just, you know, that's I think those are the those are the the sobering things that um, we have to think about. Um, And then, you know, uh, the hard to hard thing too is, you know, our culture. We want to reach out when people are hurting, when there are funerals, and unfortunately, big funerals um, have been um, at least been the cause of a whole bunch of um, community spread. And so we have to do different things, I guess. Um, in addition to Zoom being used for this kind of stuff, I there's a bunch of Zoom rosaries now, and it's a real interesting thing how it has impacted the social dynamic of the island. And then even in your own, um, you know, your own uh, immediate family outside your household, it's just changes that we make, you know. I had relatives that dropped me something yesterday. They, you know, still left it on the gate. I waved at them, said it was good to see them and thank them, but it's just a new different dynamic. And then with this one, with 18 of our people to pass away, um, you know, earlier than they um, were exp- would have, for sure. It is a big, it's a big thing, but it also is a driver to try and uh, make sure that uh, we push and push and push to try and push more resources. And in this case, more manpower to come on island to, to help all the frontliners that have been pretty much working nonstop for the last six months. Mm-hmm. Well, I- I was going to say if you had anything to say, um, because it's not only um, September is what disaster preparedness awareness month, it's suicide prevention right. awareness month, and it's so, also uh, recovery month. Right. And I know yes. you, 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 your experience, you were with the judiciary of Guam, and um, this is an issue that I remember you speaking about, uh, I think it was last year. Yes. Is there anything you'd like yes. to say? Um, and something that I still have, so every Wednesday, um, I meet with um, Behavioral Health and DYA usually, and the topic has been, um, and we just restarted our meeting last week, the topic really is uh, expanding substance abuse uh, programming uh, and also trying to um, identify and expand the facilities for recovery. So there is a, there is a, there's some a, a additional work that we're doing a um, couple fronts, um, we just identified some CIP money for behavioral health to uh, do a permanent uh, structure for their, for, uh, to add on for their substance abuse um, uh, treatment and counseling. 
and then we'd also have plans to um, expand the number of beds. So already Gura is funding additional beds with Salvation Army for women in recovery with families. Yeah. That has been a huge gap because there's so many women that um, are motivated to recover, uh, lead a life of recovery, but reunify with their families and their children. Uh, and there hasn't been a facility that's been able to um, to be there for the women that come out of the programming and then um, work to reintegrate them with the kids. That is good. We'll probably break ground in, uh, in, we're supposed to break ground before the shutdown. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know all the contracts are in, are in place, uh, but I'm looking forward to the construction of that. And then the second thing uh, is the uh, additional inpatient for men um, that uh, we're working on a plan uh, and some funding streams for. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Recovery month is important. And, you know, a lot of people um, are struggling um, with the dependency that they have. Uh, and I just want to say for that and for suicide prevention, part of it is um, us observing things in our families. When you see people withdrawn, if you start seeing a radical behavior change and you try and make an effort to reach out to them, sometimes the ones that are addicted are not ready to talk about it. But I just would say, you know, whenever you can, don't give up on people. It's hard because you can get into conflicts with your family members who are on it. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things that are wrapped around. There could be some alienation, some abuse, but uh, we need to try and figure out how to uh, muster resources in order for us to um, continue. Because we do have, this is a big piece for us because addiction and um, dependency is a huge problem for long standing. Right. Uh, but I think that will, but I'm, um, I think that by adding the additional programs and facilities um, over the next year, it's going to be, it's going to, we're going to be better than we were this year, I would say. But yeah, those are the, thanks for bringing that up, right. Sabrina. Yeah. Those uh, are big things. Uh, LT, if, if we could just uh, a couple things, the budget, and then have you heard anything about this uh a situation with the Frank Cable because we haven't had any official confirmation, but people are definitely talking. This is a vessel that's home ported on Guam. Uh, so anything on the Frank Cable and what you, uh, the administration anticipates with uh, the budget bill? So I've I heard that also. I hadn't spoken to uh, the Admiral myself to uh, get a brief and I'll inquire and find out, but I had heard that and I wouldn't, have, it wouldn't be surprising because the Frank Cable is home ported here. And if the level of uh, community spread in the civilian community has been so high, uh, it'd be very hard to contain from all of the home ported um, sailors that are on there. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and I guess it's gonna be about how they respond and how they try and continue to be in a state of readiness since the Frank Cable exists to basically support the entire submarine operation on Guam and in the and in the Indo PACOM. So it is a critical readiness asset um, and personnel that they need to get up. And then with the budget uh, still looking, uh, we have some, I think that we'll get some dialogue with the legislature, uh, some members over the next uh, day or so, I'm hopeful. Uh, I, I understand, I, I'm not wanting to add on to any further of the, of the discourse, only to say that obviously for us, we're looking at um, our healthcare and public safety agencies and trying to figure out how we would maneuver in the next year with a reduction in the resources there. But, um, you know, I know the analysis is still done a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, work within the agencies trying to figure out uh, what their plans will be um, given uh, this funding level. And then, of course, waiting to see how the governor will continue to deliberate and she has until Thursday to make a decision. Okay. All right, thanks, Josh. All right. Thank you, LT. All right, I thank mean, you, thank guys. Governor. Yeah, okay, we'll see you. Wash your hands, be safe. Okay. That's that. Thanks. 8.33, it's the